Hi there, my name's Nico, and today I'm going to give you the Lennox build I made for Season 6. With the removal of extra skill damage, Lennox's main weapon, Glepnir, has been severely nerfed, and a new build was needed. And I finally found the build after testing and theory crafting multiple builds. So now let's take a look at the build. So the build is Thunder Whip, Commander's Armor, Imperial Crown, Drop Near, Tachyon Brace, and White Crane Fan. The road goes Factory, Forest, Chapel, Alley, Pond. The build ID is displayed on screen and is also written in the description. Not only is Thunder Whip better after the nerf to Glepnir, but also White Crane Fan got a huge buff to have 11% AM, which Lennox really wants. And with the addition of Fabric Armor and Forest, you can make Commander's Armor on route. So in Factory, you want to grab as many layers as you can find in your loot set, and you want to grab one alcohol so you can make Raisin Rum Bread. In Forest, you probably won't get all the gems you need as you need five, but try to loot two different loot sets to get as many gems as possible. Ideally, you want to aim for three gold so you can have everything but your Imperial Crown finished in Alley. You also want to boil the other water and grab honey in forest to make hot honey water. In the early game you do have SP issues even with spirit calling so you want to make sure you have some SP on hand. You also want to grab an oriental herb and flower to make orchids. And then chapel grab the glass bottles part of your loot set to make healing potions. You will have a lot of food which you normally don't want to do but since Lennox skills with levels more than weapon mastery, making extra food is perfectly fine. Grab a stallion medallion and alley start prepping your rope cups for bloody nine tails. Also make sure you grab extra lighters in alley if you find them. You should be in pawn before night 1. Staying in alley any later is extremely risky as you aren't finished your build and you might run into characters such as Luke who are strong in the early game. In pond ideally you want to kill the two bears and the majority of animals in pond, but if there is a Yawn or Camilla there it's not worth fighting over. Again Lennox is better with levels so fighting someone over animals is not worth it unless they are under belt and you know you can kill them. After farming the pond animals you want to grab some potatoes, you'll be making some fish and chips later on. In Avenue, you want to make repaired slippers so you can turn them into glacial shoes later on. If you find two oil here, then even better. Afterwards, you want to head towards one of the three cod fishing locations. I'll go to the one where there is no objective. Then I find the animals there if there are any and make fish and chips. Afterwards, you want to head towards one of the three of life locations that are going to spawn during night two. I prefer to go to the hospital tree since there is ice there. If you go early, you can get vision to see if there is anyone in the area. If there's only one person and it's not that bad of a matchup and they aren't fed, then I'm going to fight them. Otherwise, just call a tree of life from a transfer console. Then head towards day 3 meteorite to make a cabana. If you manage to get cabana before, then see if anyone's at omega. While doing all this, trust farm animals. Ideally, kill mutant animals to stack credits so you can buy VF blood to make bloody nine tails later on. Once you're level 16, unless the matchup is really bad like Chloe, then you should be able to kill anyone as long as you have your ultimate. So most of your kills will be in the late game. Characters you might run into in Pond would be Yon, Camillo, Adina, and Rosie. Adina shouldn't be an issue as long as she isn't running Amazonas, but everyone else is difficult to deal with, so just poke and don't fully commit and make sure your way to the next location. The skill order for this build is Q, W, E, T, and R, Alt, when available. The build will have the skill order saved, so you don't have to worry about memorizing it. For augments, you want to run Vampiric Bloodline. This is mainly for the skill amp you get. The other red augments you want to run are Quench and Spirit Calling. Farming on Lennox takes a long time and even after the nerfs to quench you still need it in my opinion. Now you can run the fortification tree or the support tree for your sub augments. I run the support tree because I go for a one shot combo but you can use the fortification tree if you want for longer fights. For the fortification tree you want to take embolden and steadfast and if you want to take the support tree like what I use, use thorn shackles and assembly. You are mainly running this tree for thorn shackles to make sure you secure the kill. Now for your transition items. For your weapon you want bloody nine tails, for your chest piece you want cabana, you can use Mithril Armor or Queen of Hearts if you find it and you're still in Commander's Armor. For your headpiece, you can use Mithril Helm or Elysian Halo. I normally upgrade my headpiece last as Imperial Crown is really good on Lennox. For your arm piece, you want Bracelet of Scotty, Promolins, Mithril Shield, or Auto Arms. For your shoes, you want Glacial Shoes. If you're still in Tachyon Brace, you can use Boots of Hermes, Mithril Boots, or Iron Maidens. You can use Red Shoes, but they are the worst shoes out of all the rare resource shoes. And for your accessory, you can use Sanguine Yunbai or Kandala. You will rarely get Kandala since it's the hardest rare resource to get in the game, since you need two rare resources for it. If you do get Kandala, it is generally worth losing your healing reduction for it because of how much damage you get from it. You can technically use Eye of Horus, but I think the stats aren't worth it compared to White Crane Fan. Okay, now for the Lennox combo. It's the exact same thing I showed in my last two Lennox videos, but since you may have not seen them, let's go over the combos. For the first combo, and the one you will most likely use, is Q, E, W, D, R, Auto, Q. This is your kill combo in the late game and will kill the majority of the cast. Alternatively, you can use D, R, Auto, Q, E, W, Auto, Q. This will rarely be used, but it's good on squishy characters that are running away as they don't need to take as much damage as melees. Now that I've explained the build, here's a game showing it in action. Hi there, the name's Nico, and today I'm going to go over my Lennox build I made for Season 6. Okay, so there's, there's a lot of out here in the beginning. First off, make sure you grab as much lighters as you can. Make sure you grab one alcohol. 
you don't need a gun and uh, yeah that's just the first thing we know while you're in factory here make sure you just follow your loot set as well and head towards the teleporter the forest the big thing with season six changes that glepnir has been nerfed pretty heavily it does the same Thunder Whip does the same amount of damage as Glepnir does at level 4, which obviously, if it's something that's a level 4, why would you build it? So, Glepnir is dead now, so this is my Thunder Whip build. This is, I've tested it a lot, I've been playing it a bunch of ranked, I've been able to climb the top 100 at the time of recording this video with this build, and I'm actually currently number 1 Lennox in NA. I'm sure that will change once the previous top Lennox players will play more, because I don't really play the game. Or at least play rank that much so but yeah for now i can claim number one <laughs> lennox in NA. so yeah this is the build i used to climb to that position and for us you're gonna have to multiple loot sets you see i you have four gold you want to make sure you grab your orchid to move it, or your oriental herb to make orchid grab a flower turn to orchids and boil one of your waters with the one of your lighters to make hot honey water because you need some sp in the early game Ideally, you should be able to get your loot set. Like, this is the set you want to take all, every single time once you leave Forest. Most people don't take Razors. The only people that take Razors generally is Chang Pao users and maybe some Shuriken users, but those are far and few between, so you shouldn't have an issue with it. But the Piano Wire, on the other hand, might be some difficult to find. As you can see with this time, it took me a second loot set to find it, but I managed to find it another the last the only thing i didn't find this time is glass bottles but ideally you get glass bottles in your loot set and make healing potions so yeah we're in alley again luke it, it should be like strong here so i mean it's only two minutes in the game so luke's not fully built but i am worried about this luke gonna go on me so i'm just gonna leave because i don't want to take that risk <laughs> But yeah, in alley you should so yeah i said the loot this loot's probably go on me so i'm like i'm just gonna tp to pawn and craft there but you should have everything but your helmet done since you need a hat so you actually won't have a helmet until pawn technically if you're smart and you think about it more unlike me here you grab a bike helmet in chapel and just wear that temporarily it won't really do too much it's like 30 hp but it's better than nothing so but yeah you finish here and you can see I drank one of my hot honey water because I have no SP. And yeah, and dealing with the bears here, you'll just be farming for some weapon mastery. And Lennox doesn't really need weapon mastery, but farming animals also gives you XP to level up. And so, yeah, just another good thing to have. And yeah, I luckily found a oil off the bat, so you'll be making the oil because you want to make fish and chips. I saw that Luke TP, and again, I don't want to fight Luke right now. This is when like Luke's the strongest, and this is when I'm my weakest, so why would I fight Luke? Doesn't make sense. So yeah, we're just gonna move on. This is generally the path I also take the farm animals, by the way, like that exact same routing. Bears. Pick up the boar is up by temple. If it's not, then I go down and kill the boar. And the bat and your the like teleporter well somewhat then i walk to the right here kill that bat grab potatoes then kill the boar there and the chicken and the dog here and while i'm here i'm looking for slippers cloth in this case i'm also looking for glass bottles because i didn't find any in chapel and oil yeah, I grab console. I see them fighting down here, or Rosie chasing Shuichi. But again, I can't really fight Rosie. Like if she lands R on me, I'm generally dead because Rosie's R is max HP damage, and Lennox is known to have a lot of HP, which is why it's hard to kill her. But with that, this makes it really easy to kill Lennox. So we're just looking for slippers. There we go. We didn't find any glass bottles unfortunately but i'm pretty sure if we find oil here what i'll do is i'll go to the dock because there's glass bottles and dock and then there's fish and dock as well as lighters so 
But yeah, here we go. We found the oil, but we found the glass bottles, but we still need a lighter, so we're gonna go to the dock as long as there's no objective there. It's chapel and beach, so we know that no one's in dock. It also is shown the raider, and, and I believe there was no one in dock anyway, so we're just gonna have the dock go catch the cod there. And we look for a lighter as well, which we found on the first bin. As for transitions, you honestly just want glacials like, at a minimum your biggest upgrade will be glacial shoes oh, yeah i hear the yuki by the way but the yuki like is missing an accessory i noticed but i don't really want to fight him well it's mainly just also that you can't chase since you're on thunder whip now instead of glupnir you're losing 0.6 ms plus you're going to be running White Crane Fan now, so you're not going to be on Bergenat. So you're technically losing 0.8 MS, which is quite significant in terms of your chasing power. So on this build, you have to note that you can't chase people. You have to let people fight into you or you have to one combo them. Yeah, the Yuki dashed out of my whip skill range, so I can do anything. So I'm just like not bothered. Make sure you kill as many mutant animals as you can. This is... Um... Oh, what's it called? This is... Bleeder Jackie. Sorry, I... Bleeder Jackie for Lennox is quite hard to kill because they have Helmet Banneret. You don't know Helmet Banneret has skill damage reductions, and I'm all skill damage reductions. Every single... Five of my items have skill damage reduction on them, so... It's very hard for me to fight her when she reduces my skill damage. So yeah, I don't I don't generally bother with Leader Jackie. Yeah, now I'm gonna head towards a hospital to see if I can get a tree. Which, you know, I had the pond because the hospital's closed, right? So and the meteorite's also spawning here, so I'm like might as well grab the meteorite first. While I'm here, I did see a ping up down here. Well, that's just oh, less places I meant to the ping. There's a. I can't. I'm apparently pinging this. I don't know why. But yeah, there's not a ping up there, but we'll just get Scotty or Scotty Cabana here. Who knows the tree is gone? So we're gonna investigate to see who took the tree. We're almost at our strong point. We still technically need. Oh yeah, we see it's a uh, Marcus. I thought he was quite low from the animals, but I managed to get stunned. And as Marcus gets out, I can't chase at all. So again, Lennox's just chase potential is quite low this season. Her damage is higher, but her her chase is lower. So you pretty much want to hope that you one combo them or else you're either they're gonna not fight you because they're too low after the combo or if they aren't low enough they'll just kill you so <laughs> yeah. we're just gonna check the bears that the bears didn't have anything so Yeah, since we didn't get a tree, I'm gonna have to order a tree of life in with my credits. As you can see, I have 72 credits, so I can buy a tree. Tree is 55 credits. And glacial shoes are the biggest upgrade you can get, in my opinion. Because that's the only damage slot you can really increase. Every other damage slot is like pretty minimal. Like you can do Burgonette technically, and that increases your damage by 3% ant, which is like nothing. You can do Bracelet of Scotty, and that also increases by 3% amp, which is like also nothing. You could technically, like, Kandala is better because it goes up by 6% amp, but you also get HP, movement speed, so you could do that, but again, that's two re resources, which would be like 110, no, 115 credits. So it's not even really worth it. Like, I'd rather do a VF. And so you have Glacial Shoes as the other one, because we're currently at zero, but Glacial Shoes go up to 20% amp. So at this point, we'll be at 13% amp from Glacials. 
Yeah, we're just gonna chill here. We oh yeah, I remember this game. There's only a Marcus up in the corner where you can see where my mouse is by that the alley. That alleyway and avenue that goes towards alley. But I was just watching that area to see if Marcus would come and he didn't, so I was like, okay, we'll just get this for free. Now we have to head towards an ice zone, and which would be cemetery or hotel. I decide to head towards cemetery. If I remember correctly. Because oh I head towards cemetery because Omega spawned a hotel and I didn't want to deal with like the million people who are fighting Omega. Yeah, I'll give you a little bit of foreshadow here. I looked through like four loot sets and I found zero ice, so we ended up having to order it in. <laughs> Yeah, I see the Sua there, but again, I'm looking for ice because my damage is going to go up significantly if with ice. And this one's about to close, so I don't want to fight the Sua and risk not finding ice, which I didn't find anyway, but I wanted to make sure I check all the bins possible. So yeah, we checked the four loot sets, by the way. And none of them had ice in it. We're gonna check this one. Let's see, we didn't check all of this loot set because we have 10 seconds of timer. Or like there's 10 seconds left before the zone closes. And there's no ice in any of it. So I was like, this is extremely unfortunate. I don't wanna fight Yuki because I want ice. So there you can see where Wick is, Wick's in forest. Honestly, you don't really care too, too much for Wick. Like, Wick buff is the worst thing you have to fight, but if someone gets Wick on spawn, then you can not deal with, like, Wick buff at all. By the way, I just wanted to point out, this game I got extremely lucky. I opened a blue box and we found a VF Blood in it. I Honestly, I think the odds of this is, like, less than 1%. Like, I have rarely gotten a VF Blood from a box. So, I think that was the first time this whole, like, season, even like, yeah, even since preseason that I've gotten a VF Blood, so I think the odds are extremely rare, so we're gonna end up ordering our medallion then, because all the medallion zones are closed. Yeah, they're all closed, so we just order it in. And then we're gonna go to the hotel to look for ice. Actually, we, yeah, we didn't order that in because we got the VF Blood. I was gonna order it in, and then I was like, wait. VF blood, we're just gonna order the heart for uh, my nine tails. You could do prominence here. I not too big of losing the damage from prominence. It, you do get CDR, but I play more of like a combo character, or like yeah, I'd say combo character more initiate this combo and that should kill people. And I so I prefer the damage from drop near over switching the prominence because you'll lose your 19% amp. This one you do gain amp until level 18, which then it's the same as the, it's the same as Thunder Whip. So watch yourself. I hear the Marcus fighting here, so I was like, okay, I think maybe we can combo him. I haven't faced Marcus because he's like the newest character, so You can see he's at 70 health. Uh, it wasn't the best combo for me, so I didn't manage to kill him. And again, Lennox has no chase potential this patch, so he just gets out. No problem. Yeah, we uh, we don't know there's a Burgonet on him, and I was considering doing Burgonet with this, but again, Burgonet from town is only 3% more amp. Oh yeah, here's the Wick Buff person, and I don't want to fight Wick Buff person. 
until I really have to. And plus, I don't have my ultimate because I just used it on the other Marcus. So we're just going to chill. But yeah, I was considering using this instead of Crown, but then the movement speed overlaps and um yeah i'm just the main movement speed overlap and you only have three percent more damage so yeah we're gonna just wait for this yellow box to spawn to see what it is we could be pinned here, which would be quite bad, but we're risking it for the box. We can always go through the research center if needed. Let's think on how to use the restricted areas. Watch yourself. Don't let and look, we ended up getting a uh, sanguine goodbye, which is just directly better than white cream fan so you get cdr you get healing reduction for even more and we get the switch drive so yeah we come in and try the third party this but wick bleed and smolder end up taking yuki and at this point we can pretty much combo anyone the burgundy proc here so i did need an additional q but that was your ideal combo so even through 160 defense we can still kill uh, because this is, this is like game Lennox. So this is when you're going to be trying to find kills at this point. Once you're like level 16, you should be hunting out your good matchups. All the melee characters pretty much in the lobby. You're going to go try to on-site them. So yeah, we're hiding all these rare or these legendary items so no one else gets them. I don't want the Yuki or the other Marcus to get any of these items. So we're just hiding them in a bush because this one's closing. So... Honestly, I could have dropped the burgundy in the bush too. I don't know why I held on to it because I'm not going to wear it. <laughs> There's no reason for me to wear this because I don't care for the lifesteal or the attack power. I'm very fine with just wearing Cabana. Yeah, but the other Marcus that we just killed was somehow had a Scotty on him, which obviously if you find a free Scotty, just take it. <laughs> like, don't go out of your way to make it, but if you find one, just wear it, so... We're pretty much Exodi at this point. The only thing I want instead would Let's be Halo. But the crown, I said, is really good on Lennox. You use all the stats really well. HP actually works with Lennox. This is Q and her shield. So, but yeah, just by the way, I wanted to note, for some reason, they were both in chapel. I was by myself here. So I noticed the... See, here's the TP in. So we just combo the CP. Q, W, whip skill, R... He bleeds, I miss E, but I get another Q in, and he just dies to W. With this much CDR, you actually can use a second W in a fight, which is extreme, like, really why you want CDR. So, yeah. I should just wear this. I think I'd wear this Halo. I should be. If I, if I don't wear it, then I'm just not paying attention. So yeah, I'm trying to force him out of the circle. I don't care about the white flagging at all, because this is just easy kill. We're just going for poking. I am kind of worried about being wall slammed by Marcus, but... Ideally, you don't want to use your ultimate when he has diamond shard up, but I'm trying to force him to take the bleed damage because that will kill. And at this point, we have so much CDR that our ult's going to be up really soon, like 30 seconds final zone. So we're just we're trying to burn his timer because I saw how much timer he had since I have console. And yeah, I don't want him to heal up, so we're, we're trying to force him out, take timer. Because I know I have the timer advantage, but I don't want him to like fully re reset. So you can see that he's going to heal up right here. So I'm going out. I'm going to whip skill him into R. This is the second combo I told you guys about what to do. It doesn't do as much damage as you see. 
So you you have to do other things against a melee. Against a range that would actually kill, but not against melees at all. Especially since he has myth armor and helmet banner on, so you need to have a second follow up. But with this much CDR, you can, no problem. So yeah, that's how you play Linux and how you play this build. If you like this guide, please consider giving it a like and let me know if you like these types of videos. And if you like eternal turns, which is I do, consider subscribing. I hope to see you at the next video.